labor management relations an overview of industry and industrial relations explain labor management relations analyze the important segments of industrial relations explain the right duties and unfair labor practices analyze the scope of national labor relation board describe mediation and alternative dispute relation the labor management relation is a term where ongoing economic and social interactions between labor unions and management in organizations build labor relations are thus crucial to industries like autos and airlines with heavily unionized workforces the labor relation explores aspects of industrial life such topics as management union relationships remaining non union collective bargaining trade unionism discipline and grievance handling industrial disputes employee participation in management and the interpretation of labor laws the potential contribution of a union representative the advantages of represented workplace and the grievances the collective bargaining process is a key part of industrial relations it aims to reach an agreement for all employees and workers in a given company or workplace usually it focuses on issues such as wages working hours promotions benefits and other employment terms trade unionism is also famous for the interaction between management and the workers it includes the system principles and practices of trade unions the employer has a right to hire and lay off workers an organization's management can shut down or merge some of its assets or implement technological changes thus it affects the interests of its employees governments attempt to influence and regulate industrial relations via laws economic policy rules and agreements because of many changes in the concept of management worker interactions the term industrial relations developed to be more associated to the unionized sector of the labor market a lot of participants still consider labor management relations as related to the three solutions to the labor problems personal human resource management trade unionism and collective bargaining government legislation in the us labor relations were profoundly affected by the national labor relations act passed during 1930s which gave workers the right to form unions and bargain collectively labor relations have also been importantly affected by the passage of the taft hartley act which prohibited the closed shop as well as the introduction of right to work laws in more than 20 states by the early 21st century labor relations were less affected by labor unions to which only 8% of private sector workers belonged in 2004 about half of the rate in 1983 the decline reflects the increase in labor relation consultants who have helped management avoid unionization labor management relations is particularly valuable to ensure concerns and problems of the people who do the work are addressed this is very powerful to keep the workforce from getting upset and not performing their jobs or even quitting some of the material terms in labor management relation are as followed importance of industrial relation the term industrial relations has developed 
both a broad and narrow meaning originally industrial relations were broadly defined to include the totality of relationships and interactions between employers and employees from this perspective industrial relations cover all aspects of the employment relationship including human resource management employee relations and union management relations since the mid 20th century however the term has increasingly taken on a narrower more restricted interpretation that largely equates it with unionized employment relationships the healthy industrial relations are the key to the progress and success their significance may be discussed uninterrupted production the most important benefit of industrial relations is that this ensures continuity of production this means continuous employment for all from manager to workers the resources are fully utilized resulting in the maximum possible production there is an uninterrupted flow of income for all reduction in industrial disputes good industrial relations reduce the industrial disputes disputes are reflections of the failure of basic human urges and motivations to secure adequate satisfaction or expression which are fully cured by good industrial relations strikes lock out go slow tactics and grievances are some of the reflections of industrial unrest which do not spring up in an atmosphere of industrial peace it helps promoting cooperation and increasing production high morale good industrial relations improve the morale of the employees employees work with great zeal with a feeling in mind that the interest of employer and employees is one and the same every worker feels that he is a co-owner of the gains of industry the employer in his turn must realize that the gains of industry are not for him alone but they should be shared equally and generously with his workers it increases the place of workers in the society and their ego is satisfied it naturally affects production because mighty cooperative efforts alone can produce exceptional results mental revolution the main object of industrial relation is a complete mental revolution of workers and employees the industrial peace lies ultimately in a transformed outlook on the part of both it is the business of leadership in the rank of workers employees and government to work out a new relationship in consonance with the spirit of true democracy it will naturally have an impact on production because they recognize the interest of each other reduced wastage good industrial relations are maintained on the basis of cooperation and a recognition of each other it will help increase production wastages of man material and machines are reduced to the minimum and thus national interest is protected thus it is evident that good industrial relations are the basis of higher production with a minimum cost of higher profits it also results in increased efficiency of workers new and new projects may be introduced for the welfare of the workers and to promote the morale of the people at work an economy organized for planned production and distribution aiming at the realization of social justice and welfare of the message can function effectively only in an atmosphere of industrial peace if the twin objectives of rapid national development and increased social justice are to be achieved there must be a harmonious relationship between management and labor rights duties and unfair labor practices rights are legal social or ethical principles of freedom or entitlement that is 
the right are the fundamental normative rules about what is allowed of people or owed to people according to some legal system social convention or ethical theory right or of essential importance in such discipline as law and ethics especially theories of justice and deontology the duty is responsibility of conduct function or performance that arises from an express or implied contract or from the fact of holding an office or position employers used many tactics to prevent employees from joining unions and to disrupt union activities in the workplace the passage of national labor relations act of 1935 also known as the wagner act marked the beginning of affirmative federal government support of unionization and collective bargaining the nlra prohibits employers from taking certain action against their employees and the union that represent them a prohibited action is called an unfair labor practice right of employers and employees every employee is free to be a member of a trade union and to participate in its lawful activities every employer is free to be a member of an employers organization and to participate in its lawful activities prohibition against dismissals etc for exercising employee rights a person must not refuse to employ or refuse to continue to employ a person threaten dismissal of or otherwise threaten a person discriminate against or threaten to discriminate against a person with respect to employment or a term or condition of employment or membership in a trade union or intimidate or coerce or impose a pecuniary or other penalty on a person if no collective agreement respecting a unit is in force and a complaint is filed with the board alleging that an employee in that unit has been discharged suspended transferred or laid off from employment or otherwise disciplined in contravention of this code the board must forthwith inquire into the matter and if the complaint is not settled or withdrawn the board must commence a hearing on the complaint within the 3 days of its filing promptly proceed with the hearing without interruption except for any necessary adjournments and render a decision on the complaint within 2 days of the completion of the hearing unfair labor practices except or otherwise provided in section 8 any employer or a person acting on behalf of an employer must not participate in or interfere with the formation selection or administration of trade union or contribute financial or other support towards it despite this section an employer may permit an employee or representative of a trade union to confer with the employer during working hours or to attend to the trade union's business during working hours without deducting time so occupied in computing the time worked for the employer and without deducting wages for that time an employer or a person acting on behalf of an employer must not discharge suspend transfer lay off or otherwise discipline an employee refuse to employ or to continue to employ a person or discriminate against a person in regarding to employment or condition of employment because the person is or proposes to become or seeks to induce another person to become a member or officer of a trade union impose in a contract of employment a condition that seeks to restrain an employee from exercising his or her rights under this code
use or authorize or permit the use of the services of a person in contravention of section 68 national labor relation board the american labor movement encouraged by the protection guaranteed to enactment of national industry recovery act in 1933 as a massive wave of union organizing punctuated by the employer and union violence general strikes and the recognition strikes occurred the national industrial recovery act was administered by national recovery administration the national labor relations board is an independent agency of the united states government charged with conducting elections for labor union representation and with investigating and remedying unfair labor practices unfair labor practices may involve union related situations or instances of protected concerted activity the inequality of bargaining power between employees who do not possess full freedom of association or actual liberty of contract and employers who are organized in the corporate or other forms of ownership association substantially burdens and affect the flow of commerce it also tends to aggravate recurrent business depressions by depressing wage rates and the purchasing power of wage earners in the industry and by preventing the stabilization of competitive wage rates and working conditions within and between industries experience has proved that protection by law of the right of employees to organize and bargain collectively safeguards commerce from inquiry impairment or interruption and promotes the flow of commerce by removing certain recognized sources of industrial strife and unrest by encouraging practices fundamental to the friendly adjustment of industrial disputes arising out of differences as to wages hours or other working conditions and by restoring equality of bargaining power between employers and employees experience has further demonstrated that certain practices by some labor organizations their officers and members have the intent or the necessary effect of burdening or obstructing commerce by preventing the free flow of goods in such commerce through strikes and other forms of industrial unrest or through concerted activities which impair the interest of the public in the free flow of such commerce it is also essential to mitigate and eliminate these obstructions when they have occurred by encouraging the practice and procedure of collective bargaining and by protecting the exercise by workers of full freedom of association self organization and designation of representatives of their own choosing for the purpose of negotiating the terms and conditions of their employment or other mutually aid or protection mediation and alternative dispute resolution the activity of mediation appeared in highly ancient times historians located early cases in phoenician commerce the practice developed in ancient greece which knew the non marital mediator as proxenetas then in roman civilization roman law starting from the justinian's digest of recognized mediation some cultures regarded the mediator as a sacred figure worthy of a particular respect and the role partly overlapped with that of the traditional wise men or tribal chief members of peaceful communities frequently brought disputes before local leaders or wise men to resolve local conflicts this peaceful method of resolving conflicts was particularly prevalent in communities of confucians and buddhists 
the term mediation broadly refers to any instance in which a third party helps others reach agreement more specifically mediation has a structure timetable and dynamic ordinary negotiation lacks the process is private and confidential possibly enforced by law participation is typically voluntary mediation as used in law is a form of alternative dispute resolution a way of resolving disputes between two or more parties when concrete effects as the practice gained popularity training programs certifications and licensing followed producing trained professional mediators committed to the discipline disputants may mediate disputes in a variety of domains such as commercial legal diplomatic workplace community and family matters mediators use various techniques to open or improve dialogue between disputants aiming to help the parties reach an agreement much depends on the mediator skills and training the mediator acts as a neutral third party and facilitates rather than directs the process typically a third party the mediator assists the parties to negotiate a settlement in addition to dispute resolution mediation can function as a means of dispute prevention such as facilitating the process of contract negotiation governments can use mediation to inform and to seek input from stakeholders in formulation or fact seeking aspect of policy making alternative dispute resolution process a place to all disputes related to alleged non compliance with the code and to disputes of a contractual nature but does not apply to disputes which are described in the sub clauses it is essential to note that this process is only available if both the insurer and the repairer involved in the dispute are signatories to the code alternative dispute resolution includes dispute resolution processes and techniques that act as a means for disagreeing parties to come to an agreement short of litigation the external dispute resolution etr refer clause 11 is based on concept of mediation by an independent and trained mediator before undertaking the edr process it is a requirement of the code that idr be undertaken in an endeavor to the matter should idr fail and provided the dispute is of a nature that allows it to be dealt with edr provisions of the code edr can be initiated to commence an edr action under the code the applicant must lodge a notice of dispute with the cac's nominee leader providing the necessary information as outlined in the clause 11.3 essential services and the right to strike the starting point is to inquire whether essential services workers have or should have a right to strike at all the right to strike for the purposes of collective bargaining is one of the fundamental rights enshrined in section 27 of the south african constitution it is an extremely valuable right because if the workers could not in the last resort collectively refuse to work they could not bargain collectively the power of management to shut down the plant would not be matched by corresponding power on the side of labor these are the ultimate sanctions without which the bargaining power of the two sides would lack credibility there can be no equilibrium in industrial relations without a freedom to strike essential service workers should not however be left without an alternative to strike action and conventionally they are given the powerful weapon of compulsory arbitration as a substitute this process 
allows one party to refer a dispute in essential services to arbitration with or without the agreement of other party an arbitrator then has to determine the dispute as it have been determined if strike action were permissible as stated earlier collective bargaining without leverage for both side robs the process of equilibrium which is essential for its success and that is why it is conventional when the right to strike is taken away to substitute it with compulsory arbitration in this way equilibrium is maintained at the bargaining table the lra and the dispute procedures contained in the various public sector bargaining councils all have disputes procedures which provide that any party to a dispute that is precluded from participating in a strike or lockout because the party is engaged in an essential service may refer the dispute to conciliation and if the dispute remains unresolved then any party to the dispute may request that the dispute be resolved through arbitration any arbitration award made in such arbitration in respect of the state which has financial implications for the state only becomes binding 14 days after the date of the award unless a minister has tabled the award in parliament within that period or 14 days after the date of tabling the award unless parliament has passed a resolution that the award is not binding if parliament passes a resolution that the award is not binding the dispute must be referred back to the ccma for further conciliation that arbitration is then final and binding on the state and the worker whether or not the parties refer a dispute to the arbitration in terms of section 74 a strike is essential services remains unprotected the causes for the high incidence of unprotected and violent strike in essential services are multifaceted and complex the process need to be a problem solving one rather than an adversarial and positional one between government trade unions and political parties in every country reform priority appear to be changing the way in which the system is financed cutting costs and incorporating market mechanisms reforms have improved coverage in a few cases but the issues of hr have been neglected to say the least in those few cases in which attention was paid to human resources changes have focused on incentives and remuneration systems not on a systematic action in human resource management this neglect is highlighted by the surprising dearth of systematic literature and specific studies this is also effect economic and other studies of innovation and mechanism given the importance of knowledge for professional practice employment and labor issues can be of key significance in the acquisition of a business specialized legal advice should be obtained in each case to assess the risk in opportunities that are being explored and to minimize liabilities to the greatest extent permissible by law in the circumstances regardless of the direction of the reforms experience show them to have been mostly negative in terms of hr state changes in contract modalities have only made employment more precarious with consequent increases in segmentation and also in the intensity of work